Thank you very much, Prof. And uh, thank you to um, everyone at the UPM, uh, CIRAD and POB. Uh, very happy to be here. And uh, uh, thank you, Yanti. Um, I would appreciate if you could help me with the slides. Um, yeah, okay. That'd be great. Um, and uh, just to um, uh, highlight that I I'm basically work as a microeconomist uh, at a business uh, industry um, application level, um, as well on trade analysis. And um, in terms of uh, academia, of course, I've had a, a wonderful occasions uh, to be with uh, uh, CIRAD and UPM uh, at their talks, and uh, also uh, published uh, some chapters on uh, Johor Palm economy, uh, farm income and politics, uh, China overseas foreign direct investment, um, and of course, as mentioned, uh, by Prof uh, SIIA's uh, Hayes Outlook, which uh, will be coming out soon, and uh, which also, you know, sees very clearly, um, as uh, Prof Elaine has pointed out, uh, the question of uh, climate resilience, because, uh, you know, just as uh, yields uh, take the dip, um, obviously, uh, the dryness also has that impact on uh, creating uh, fire risk, uh, which has uh, uh, brought this um, uh, various issues uh, to the palm pulp um, and other um, agro landscapes in uh, uh, Sumatra, uh, Kalimantan, and el elsewhere. So what I want to share um, with you today, uh, rather quickly, um, is some of the things that I hear at a commercial and at a trading level. Um, and I think what I've observed in my last, I suppose I've been more active in the palm oil sector in the last 12, 13 years, is that to me, overwhelmingly, it's about intra-palm oil sector competition. Um, which country, which companies are vying for the premium markets and which are going to be relegated to the discount markets. And I think in this regard, the quality of the oil um, is of course uh, very important as well as the some of the Sorry, Doctor. It's Yuling. Are you there? Hello. Sorry about this. Yeah. I just realized it was uh, on mute. Um, so sorry to keep you waiting. Um, so um, I work as a microeconomist, um, and I work at a business industry application level, and a trade analyst. Um, and together with the uh, panel sessions uh, with friends at uh, UPM, CIRAD, uh, and POB. I've been very glad to uh, join into the discussions there and also with uh, think tanks and academia um, reports. So what I want to share today is what I hear at a commercial and trading level. And uh, overwhelmingly, I think in the last dozen years plus where I focused uh, quite a fair bit on palm oil is uh, my overwhelming feel about intra-palm oil sector competition um, you know, which countries, which companies are vying for the premium markets in terms of getting quality oil out and also addressing the perception as well as providing certification or other proof um, of why uh, they should be the first one in line uh, to sell uh, to, you know, the, the uh, top bidders or even to have entry um, into the huge subsidy market of the EU, uh, which pays, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of subsidy for the energy sector and also who's going to be relegated to the discount markets, you know, which, which ones are not going to be allowed in because uh, customs and border patrols stop you um, because you need to, sh you know, show your data, uh, show proof. So um, I want to quickly show first um, something that was quite interesting because when I talk to EU and other policymakers, they keep telling me, look, um, you know, we are responding to public pressure. Um, so the politicians, the policymakers. So, um, you know, I like any sort of new data. So social media, you know, let's go for it. I just want to flash out to you some of the data that I'm looking at in terms of social media analytics. Um, and it's kind of based on Twitter. And I want to show you palm oil um, relative to other uh, tropical commodities. So Yanti, could I get your kind help? Uh, I'm just going to skip all this text and just go to the charts. Thank you. So um, first one is just to show you very quickly. So this is a relative interest. The green is the palm oil and the other lines are rubber, uh, lighter green, uh, coffee, cocoa, and soy. And this is online search, uh, primarily Google. 
and what you see here, and this is a uh, since 2004 to present more or less, and you can see that palm oil has uh, broken out of the pack uh, since about 2000, uh, 2012 onwards. Um, there's this, uh, you know, you can even see huge spike, spike ups in interest, um, especially in 2018 uh, for, you know, different topics. So there's, uh, you know, people are just searching and this is sustainable. So it's sustainable palm oil, sustainable rubber. So it's that search term. Uh, so that's online search. And now can I get to the next slide, Yanti, which is uh, social media. So unfortunately, social media shows uh, palm oil um, head and shoulders above the rest, even more so because this is primarily Twitter. So unfortunately, Facebook and Instagram, the data is not uh, readily usable. So this is uh, mostly Twitter, uh, online news as well as blogs. And you can see this is about one year of information and you can see a spike up. So there, um, this is uh, me uh, looking at this and wondering why it is. And I think this is because uh, palm oil, sustainable palm oil, again, you know, the terminology is sustainable everything, right? Sustainable palm, sustainable rubber, et cetera. Uh, there is this uh, round table on sustainable palm oil and they have their yeah, meeting in November. So a lot of the um, uh, campaigns or reports are all released and all centered around this. So, you know, just mark that in your calendar. It becomes a rather noisy time in the Twitter world, in the online media and in the blog world about palm oil. And this is a global picture. And I'd also like to, I don't have it here, but I looked at local interests as well. In 2019, there was a bit of a, a jump in social media because um, I think uh, there was a school that was queried about a student's presentation about sustainable palm oil. And, uh, you know, that kind of uh, perked up a domestic uh, social media interest, unfortunately, a little bit on the negative side. And it also uh, reached into global news. So, um, you know, this is uh, my speculation, but I feel that um, it's not a good place to be in, to be in social media. Uh, whatever you can do, uh, palm oil, uh, other commodities, uh, rubber and everyone, obviously rubber and uh, others are, uh, you know, very muted if you look at it relative to palm oil. Uh, you know, we're talking about an ingredient that goes into half of the supermarket products. Um, and I think we probably all know that social media can be a toxic and difficult place to be in. And this is something to be avoided. So I think even um, you know, uh, having a very uh, contestational approach that might uh, trigger um, issues that will reach into, uh, you know, local media as well as global media. Um, you know, I think this has proven to be um, uh, not easy to handle. Uh, Yanti, may I get to the next slide? So this is why I mean not easy, because um, uh, these are sentiment readings done by some of the social media platform um, analysis. So it's based on algorithm, take it with a huge pinch of salt, uh, the levels of it, but you can see that zero is basically kind of neutral. And uh, once you go negative, you have a negative net sentiment. And I've uh, basically the positive mentions versus the uh, negative mentions gives you that feel. Of course, in general, if you talk about sustainable, you'd have thought that you would be in a more positive territory. You should be at the hundred level, um, but you know, um, sustainable palm oil, unfortunately, um, is not at the hundred positive level. Uh, there is obvious skepticism, and again, I draw on this issue of competition. There is even within some sustainable palm oil, there is disagreement. There is competition. There are people criticizing itself, uh, criticizing each other. And so um, I guess that causes this sort of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, do I call it 50 basis point um, handicap to palm oil? But anyway, there is, there is a, a disadvantage factor um, out there. Uh, could I get to the next slide? So where is this happening? Okay, uh, please note, this is very exaggerated. Um, so it's, it is an exaggerated heat map. So you can see that the, it's happening in the uh, North America, you can see that it's even um, the mentions of sustainable palm oil are happening in uh, Central America, obviously a lot less. You can see uh, Western Europe, Northwest Europe kind of blanketed in, a, in an exaggerated heat map of interest. And uh, obviously even Southeast Asia, you can see, um, I guess that's probably Tokyo in Japan. And you know, um, there's, there is this uh, interest uh, in other parts uh, of the world. The topic is, is, is there. Uh, next slide, Yanti. 
Uh, this is to give you the geographic breakdown, but I just warn you that quite often people register their Twitter accounts uh, that you know they're in the United States. I think if you check your account, you might not be registered for where you are. I'm not, I think Twitter has that slight problem. So I think we probably have an exaggeration of too much in the US, but uh, you know, UK, Malaysia, Indonesia, Canada, um, even in uh, China, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, maybe that's Hong Kong or something, because, you know, we have this, uh, 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 I don't know, bipolar world in, in, the, in the digital, uh, digital sphere, right? Um, but it's still kind of there, which is interesting. Um, could I move to the next slide? So, okay, what topics are of uh, interest when I look at tropical commodities, uh, palm oil, uh, head and shoulders, way, in fact, standing on the shoulders above the rest uh, with much less uh, social media mentions uh, for sustainable coffee, sustainable cocoa. And you can see the, where the positive, neutral and negatives are. And uh, I think to be constructive, can we look at the next slide, Yanti? So uh, I'm sorry, it's a little bit small, um, but um, I tried to break down some of the palm oil topics which were trending. So sustainable palm oil is the first one uh, as a topic. Then RSPO is obviously very heavily mentioned. That's uh, the, the most prominent um, sustainability certification. And then next down, we have ISPO, which is Indonesia Sustainable Palm Oil. And then we have ISCC, which is the energy certification out of uh, to comply with EU Renewable Energy Directive. So they come up pretty high. So that's the you know, 10,000 in a year kind of mentions so far. Uh, and the sub 10,000s are Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil is the prime one. Uh, NDPE is non-deforestation, non-peat, non-exploitation. Um, I might not be using the best um, search term there for that, but this is what is promoted by the traders and processors. And uh, maybe that's a good idea that it remains not in such high mentions that it's, uh, you know, um, at the muted, more professional level of mentions, perhaps. I'm not sure. And then, of course, we have uh, some Malaysian campaigns about uh, Palm is God's gift, which is uh, takes over from the love campaign, which is um, rather on the low side because I think they are basically domestic uh, campaigns. And I think maybe other things that palm oil could consider is, um, you know, red palm oil is also a feel good story. Um, there's that trend. I, I don't have it here, but it's, it's also not that high. Uh, in terms of uh, trending items. So maybe this is um, something to consider uh, within the palm oil um, topic, what is trending, what is more positive, what is less um, on this, because I think triggering uh, public attention has, has uh, proven to be um, perhaps problematic. Uh, on the next slide, please, Yanti. So, okay, looking ahead. So that's kind of looking at how social media treats uh, various tropical commodities. So I think um, everyone uh, else other than palm can sort of breathe a sigh. But having said that, if we look at the policy sphere, um, the regulatory sphere, and even the financial sphere, um, everyone seems to be moving now across all ingredients, across all crops. So I think even if you are facing a more quiet time in social media, I think it doesn't mean that the policymakers aren't going to, um, as it were, ask you a lot of questions. And I think one of the key things which have been happening recently, um, and I think uh, on the deforestation front, I think we can breathe a, a sigh of relief. I think uh, what um, Jean-Marc has shown us is um, a really strong and positive story, uh, but is this being communicated uh, well by the palm and other sectors? Um, and then now, of course, it's not just environmental, we're talking about social, we're talking about governance. So what about the US uh, stopping cargoes or asking questions about every Malaysian cargo that lands in the US? So I think we're moving to a very back to a sort of very G2G uh, sphere of things, but of course it's more than G2G because uh, when the cargo gets stopped, uh, the trader is scratching their heads, you know, what, what am I going to tell the customs? So I think this is where uh, the governments and the industry level, um, you know, what's the playbook? What's the, uh, the metrics? What are the indicators to give comfort? And I think uh, it's the question of how you're going to give comfort now. So it's not just forced labor. Uh, the deforestation, I think, looks a positive story going forward, even for Indonesia, very clearly, uh, as a divergence against uh, Latin America, having a deforestation uptrend. Uh, but other questions, and it's not just EU. I mean, I think when I look at Malaysian media, I'm very, pu I'm a bit puzzled at, I think maybe uh, obsession about EU because we have issues in the US, 
uh, German uh, lawmakers have just changed uh, their laws and that's going to come up. Uh, there's UK changed their Supply Chain Act as well, Forced Labour Act, Canada, uh, Japan corporates are looking at it. And what about uh, what I, you know, question that are there new, 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 new colonials? Are India and China behaving like the big economies? Are they uh, stopping cargoes? Yes. You know, look at the issue of Mahathir versus Modi for India. They they basically ramped up tariffs um, and had uh, you know a sort of boycott Malaysia campaign. Um, and in fact, you know when those things happen, it ha it happens without notification. The EU um, gives us several years of notification um, when they want to change their policy. But you know some people don't give you notification, and there's ups and downs to it. Uh, China, I mean, these markets are uh, very welcoming of palm oil, of course, but, you know, quite well known for using uh, sanitary and phytosanitary uh, standards uh, to restrict cargo movement. So the, again, this very much hits the commercial sphere. So I just want to skate. I know I'm run out of time. I just want to mention uh, again quickly, uh, big exporters are, are being very responsive to these challenges. So whether they're corporates or whether they're countries, Vietnam has, ex, you know, upped their labor regulations so that they become a preferred um, exporter to uh, to the world. Uh, Indonesia is trying, it says that they want to attract foreign direct investment by offering carbon offsets uh, to encourage them to uh, invest in Indonesia. So look out for that. They're putting their best foot forward, even while they are, um, you know, making sure that uh, that unfairness is addressed in the WTO sphere. Uh, for the financial sector seems to be tilting rapidly. Um, look at the boardroom shocks which are going on. And I think the financial sector is tilting rapidly because I think that the financial sector sees money in carbon offsets and other things. And they could rapidly tilt us into that, that situation. What does it mean for palm oil? Is palm oil ready? So I'll just go to that last bullet point there that I have. So what are your metrics? Because if we're talking about the rise of carbon offsets, you're gonna be talking about emissions per tonne product. What, how many hectares of deforestations per tonne CPO do you have as a business, as a country, as a state? as a district perhaps even. Uh, how many tons of forest carbon per ton CPO? So these are all the metrics. Um, Jeff Bezos is funding a methane uh, uh, you know, satellite. How are we gonna look like when you start to look at above ground carbon per ton product and you overlay what are the methane measured from uh, you know, up above in the satellites? You have a very sophisticated um, use of satellites now where they say, um, you know, okay, I'm going to look through the cloud cover, I'm going to look through the canopy cover, I'm going to measure your carbon very carefully. What's your, uh, you know, carbon accumulation, what's your carbon decumulation, and uh, what is this going to mean? And I think also just to touch back on what Prof. Ellen mentions as well, um, you know, a uh, task force on climate-related financial disclosures. What are plantation companies going to disclose about their climate resilience, their risk to climate resilience? It's, this is going to enter annual reports, going to be maybe measured in uh, financial terms as well. So um, thank you. Um, sorry, a bit rushed, but uh, hopefully um, some talking points for looking forward and also social media. Thank you.